Welcome to Two Projects. In this video, we are going to explain the project unveiling the intricacies of cyber harassment intentions on social media platforms. Introduction Cyber harassment refers to the malicious and often repetitive use of digital platforms to intimidate, threaten, or harm individuals or groups. In recent years, the proliferation of social media platforms has facilitated the rapid spread of cyber harassment, making it a pervasive issue in the digital age. And the prevalence of cyber harassment has serious implications for individuals' mental health, privacy, and overall well-being. Additionally, it poses significant challenges to maintaining a safe and inclusive online environment. So, addressing cyber harassment is crucial for promoting digital safety and fostering healthy online interactions. And the beneficiaries of this project encompass a wide range of stakeholders, including social media users, platform operators, policy makers, and advocacy groups. By gaining insights into the intricacies of cyber harassment, these stakeholders can develop more effective strategies for prevention, intervention, and support. And natural language processing and machine learning play pivotal roles in this project by enabling the analysis of vast amounts of textual data from social media platforms. NLP techniques help identify patterns, sentiments, and linguistic cues indicative of cyber harassment, while machine learning algorithms develop predictive models and automated tools for detecting and mitigating cyber harassment in real time. By harnessing the power of NLP and ML, this project aims to empower stakeholders with actionable insights to combat cyber harassment effectively. Object of the project. So as I already mentioned, the objective is to utilize NLP techniques for pre-processing and feature extraction from Twitter and Wikipedia data to enable effective analysis and classification of cyber harassment instances, ensuring that text data is cleaned, tokenized, and transformed into numerical representations, facilitating further analysis by machine learning algorithms. And the aim involves constructing and evaluating multiple classification models, including random forest, naive base, and voting classifier by training them on the extracted features and assessing their performance metrics such as accuracy, precision, recall, and F1 score to determine their effectiveness in accurately identifying cyber harassment patterns and distinguishing them from non-harassing content. And the objective is to conduct a comparative analysis of model performances to identify the most efficient approach for detecting and combating cyber harassment on social media platforms, enabling stakeholders to make informed decisions about deploying the most effective model in real-world scenarios for mitigating cyber harassment effectively and promoting a safer online environment. Requirements needed to execute this project are software requirements, Software needed is Anaconda. Primary language used is Python. Frontend framework used is Flask. Backend framework used is Jupyter Notebook. Database used is SQL Lite 3. And frontend technologies used are HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and Bootstrap 4. Hardware requirements needed are operating system of Windows, processor of i5 and above, RAM of 8 GB and above, and hard disk of 25 GB and above. Now we'll discuss the working modules of law of work. So the first step is important required packages. In this step, we import essential Python libraries such as NumPy, Pandas, sklearn, NLTK, WordCloud, and Matplotlib. These packages provide functionalities for data manipulation, machine learning, natural language processing, visualization, and more, which are necessary for various stages of the project. The second step is exploring the data set. Here, we explore datasets obtained from Twitter and Wikipedia to understand their structures, features, and contents. This exploration involves examining the data's dimensions, data types, and summary statistics, which helps in gaining insights into the nature of the data and identifying any initial patterns or trends. The third step is data cleaning. So data cleaning involves pre-processing the text data to remove noise and irrelevant information. This includes removing alphanumeric characters, punctuation, new line characters, and non-ASCII characters. Additionally, we convert all text to lowercase and eliminate stop words using NLTK's built-in stop words corpus. 
These steps ensure that the data is standardized and ready for further analysis. The next step is visualization. Visualization techniques such as word cloud and count graphs are employed to gain visual insights into the most frequent words or terms present in the clean text data. Word clouds visually represent the frequency of words, while count graphs provide a quantitative overview of word occurrences, aiding in understanding the underlying patterns within the data. The next step is train and test split. Here, the dataset is divided into training and testing subsets to evaluate the model's performance. The training set is used to train the machine learning models, while the testing set is used to assess the performance on unseen data, ensuring that the models generalize well to new instances. The next one is training and building the models. So in this step, machine learning models, including random forest, naive base, and voting classifier, are trained using the pre-processed text data. These models learn from the features extracted during the training phase to classify instances of cyber harassment accurately. Each model is built and fine-tuned to optimize its performance on the given task. The next one is performance comparison. The performance of each model is evaluated using metrics such as accuracy, precision, recall, and F1 score. These metrics provide insights into the model's ability to correctly classify instances of cyber harassment and non-harassment. By comparing the performance of different models, we can identify the most effective approach for detecting and combating cyber harassment. And in the next step, using Flask with SQLite, we develop a user-friendly front-end interface that allows users to input text data for classification. This front-end interface interacts with the trained machine learning models to provide real-time predictions on whether the input text contains instances of cyber harassment or is normal. Now we'll understand about the algorithms used. The first algorithm is random forest. Random forest is an ensemble learning method constructs multiple decision trees using random subsets of data and features. It aggregates their outputs for classification. This approach reduces overfitting and enhances generalization. Random forest is well suited for high dimensional data like text features from social media, and it effectively detects cyber harassment. Its robustness against is noisy or irrelevant features makes it a powerful tool for accurately classifying instances of cyber harassment in this project. The next algorithm built is Gaussian Naive Base. It is a classification algorithm based on Bayes theorem, assuming feature independence and following a Gaussian distribution. It calculates the conditional probability of a class given input features and selects the class with the highest probability. This approach is well suited for text classification tasks like detecting cyber harassment due to its ability to handle high dimensional data efficiently and perform effectively even with small data sets, making it a valuable tool in this project. And the next one is voting classifier. It combines predictions from logistic regression, random forest and naive base models with majority voting. It leverages diverse model strengths to improve overall performance, reducing bias and variance. In this project, it is chosen for its ability to integrate various algorithms, enhancing cyber harassment detection on social media platforms through an ensemble approach. Now we'll see the comparison graphs of the algorithms built using Twitter dataset. So this is the bar graph comparing accuracy scores of different algorithms. In this graph on x-axis, I have algorithm names and on y-axis, I have accuracy scores. Accuracy measures the overall correctness of predictions, showing the percentage of correctly classified instances. This is precision scores comparison graph. In this graph on x-axis, I have algorithm names and on y-axis, I have precision scores. Precision measures the accuracy of positive predictions, indicating how many predicted positives were actually correct. This is recall scores comparison graph. In this graph on x-axis, I have algorithm names and on y-axis, I have recall scores. Recall measures the ability to identify all relevant instances, showing how many actual positives were correctly predicted. And this is F1 scores comparison graph. In this graph on x-axis, I have algorithm names and on y-axis, I have F1 scores. F1 score combines precision and recall into a single metric, balancing accuracy and completeness in predictions. So similarly, these are the comparison graphs of the algorithms built using Wikipedia dataset. 
so the algorithm which is best performing in all the performance metrics will be used for classifications execution of the project to execute this project first we need to open the code folder which contains the project source code files this is the datasets folder in which i have required twitter and wikipedia datasets on which we'll train the models this is models folder in which i have model files which contain algorithm information these files will be loaded into the project code during runtime to utilize the trained models this is static folder this folder consists of files related to css javascript and bootstrap this is templates folder this folder contains all the html pages used in the project it typically includes files like index.html about.html etc which represent different pages of the website this is app.py file this .py file contains the information related to front end logic it includes code data in python that handles server side operations such as processing user requests interacting with the database and generating dynamic content to be rendered in the html pages these are jupyter source file which contains a combination of code graphs and outputs all in one place so jupyter source file allows users to write and execute code in individual cells making it a popular choice for data science this is signup.db file this file is the database file used to store user information and these are test cases files in which i have test cases on which we'll make the predictions now copy the path of the code folder from the address bar of the file explorer i'm copying it and open anaconda prompt use the command cd followed by space and paste the copied path and hit the enter button so this command is used to change the current directory to the code folder's path now compile the app.py file using the command python space app.py i'm typing python space app.py and hit the enter button so this command will execute the python script and perform a runtime check for any syntax errors or logical issues after running the app.py file the flask framework will host the application locally at the default address local host and port unless configured differently now copy the local link provided by the framework i'm copying it and paste it into any web browser i prefer chrome after pasting it hit the enter button so the home page of the project has been displayed in the browser this is the front end built using flask framework and here we can see a sign up link click on it so if you are new users we have to register first fill in all these details and click on send otp button to get the otp and then register and if we already have an account we can directly log in by clicking on this login link so as i already have an account i'm clicking on this login link here we have to provide a credentials username and password and click on login button so it has redirected us to the classifications page so as i mentioned earlier we can execute this project using twitter and wikipedia datasets so first we'll execute it using twitter dataset click on this link so here we can see a comment box where we have to enter a text and the application will classify the text if it is a harassment or non harassment text so i have entered this text now click on predict button so here we can see the predictions that is normal text detected so the application has classified the given text as normal we'll try again click on try again link we'll try giving another text click on twitter link i have entered this text now click on predict button so we can see the result that is harassment text detected so the application has classified the given text as harassment we'll try again click on try again link click on twitter link I have entered the text now click on predict button so here we can see harassment text detected so the application has classified the given text as harassment text so similarly we can try with wikipedia dataset click on wikipedia link so we have to enter the text here 
this is the entered text now click on predict button and this is the result we'll try again click on try again link click on wikipedia link this is the entered text click on predict and we can see the result that is normal text detected so similarly we can enter any text and get the detections so the conclusion here is through the exploration and analysis of cyber harassment on social media platforms this project has deepened our understanding of its intricacies prevalence and implications for digital safety and well-being by leveraging nlp techniques and machine learning algorithms such as random forest nine base and voting classifier we have developed robust models capable of accurately detecting instances of cyber harassment in textual data from twitter and wikipedia and the project empowers various stakeholders including social media users platform operators policy makers and advocacy groups by providing actionable insights and effective strategies for preventing intervening and supporting victims of cyber harassment and the deployment of the voting classifier model in flask enables real time cyber harassment detection offering a user friendly interface for individuals to assess the nature of text data and take appropriate actions based on the model's predictions moving forward ongoing efforts in research and development can further refine and improve the effectiveness of cyber harassment detection methods ultimately contributing to the creation of safer and more inclusive online environments for all users thank you for watching video for more projects please visit our website www.trueprojects.in For updates on latest project videos, please visit True Projects YouTube channel and subscribe.